Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have eight Spring Fairy Garden DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. When I think of spring, I think of fairy gardens. I think it's a really fun way to decorate. So for the first two fairy gardens, we are going to be making indoor fairy gardens using these little signs from the Dollar Tree. I chose these because they have a pretty thick frame on them. And two square ones are going to look perfectly. I can do two fairy gardens and can have it like a path between the two. So the first step is I'm just going to fill the hole in the frame with a little bit of spackle. The only thing I don't like about these Dollar Tree signs is that the frame is like an unfinished like MDF wood. And so it doesn't look very nice. So I'm going to paint mine. Um, another option is you could cover it with moss or something like that. That would be fun too. Um, but I picked up a whole bunch of the new fairy garden items from Dollar Tree and things that I thought would look cute with my spring decor. So the color I'm going to paint mine is this. It's pink polish. And I've been using a lot of pink with my spring decor. And I'm going to use a lot of pink on these two fairy gardens. So I thought that would look nice together. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it does soak up a lot of the paint, but I'm just going to use a paintbrush and paint like the very outside and the top of the frame. I don't really have to protect the surface on the bottom or anything like that from getting paint on it because it's going to be all covered with fairy garden stuff. And the frame is just going to provide a great border to kind of keep everything in. I'm actually making this these two fairy gardens for my dining room. I have a little bit of spring decor for my spring DIY video. And I wanted a little bit more to finish out my cabinet in my dining room. So I have my entryway all decorated for St. Patrick's Day. If you haven't checked out my videos, I have four St. Patrick's Day DIY videos this year. And that is the first one. Um, I just did one coat on the very outside. I did go over the very top with like another color or another coat of pink just to kind of brighten it up and make it look a little bit better. And I would suggest definitely painting the frames on those. Now you can be creative on these. You can use anything <clears throat> really with a frame. If you have a piece that you think would work and it doesn't have a frame, you could always like glue the moss and stuff around the edges to kind of pr provide a little bit of a frame if you're doing an indoor one like this. Today we're going to be doing indoor fairy gardens. Um, we're going to get really creative with different ways to display fairy gardens. And we're going to be doing outdoor fairy gardens as well. So lots of fun ideas for you today. And so I just did the same thing here with the second frame, painting it with that pink polish color. I found some really great pieces from the Dollar Tree in the Fairy Garden section. I went to like two uh, Dollar Trees yesterday to kind of see what I could find. And I was pleasantly surprised with all the cute stuff they have. I love the Fairy Garden stuff like the beach line. I use that a lot in my coastal DIYs. But I don't normally use this the regular fairy garden stuff except for in spring I really love it check out this tree I got it has like pink flowers all over the top really cute for a dollar 25 it's actually painted really nice too it's got a little butterfly on the front I thought that would make a really large uh, piece for one of these I thought that'd be really cute and I think I'm going to do it over here. I'm actually going to be gluing my pieces to, um, down today so that they won't fall over when I move them around. But that's totally optional. I also found this large piece that I thought would coordinate nicely. It is a tree with the pink flowers. And it's got like a little fairy in a swing and she's swinging. And it actually sits really nice and everything. I thought that would be really cute to do the other one. I want them to be different, but I want them to complete like a scene. And you could even, if you had space, you could even do like three of these. Um, I'm going to kind of show you how I put it all together. It turned out so cute. 
So just trying to kind of figure out exactly where I want those. I also found the little pond with the frog in it, which is so cute. I was thinking about trying to make like a fake pond with like acrylic or paint or something like this, but using these pre-made items from the fairy garden makes everything so easy and it is so cute. This other little guy's in a boat, so I don't really have anywhere to put him. So I think I'll just use the pond and I kind of want that towards the front just because it's a little bit of a shorter piece. And time to keep a decorating. I want to do about five or six pieces in each one of these and kind of lay it out like a little scene. So this is a little garden bench. It's super cute as well. It's got a pink flower on it. Um, some of these also, like this one also has a little bush that I am going to use like a little bit later on in another DIY. But I thought this was a really cute little bench that we could create a little scene. It's a great source of miniature items for sure if you want to like decorate miniature stuff. Sometimes I do use this, the fairy garden stuff for tear trays if it's large enough like you know that tree and the bench and the pond and stuff like that. I thought that the bench would be really cute like overlooking a pond. We could do like a meadow scene over here with the little fairy swinging in the tree and then we could do like the house setting on the other side. I also found these great little fairy garden bird baths. They're so cute. They have like flower tops. Aren't these so cute? So I'm going to choose the pink one because I'm kind of going with that pink theme. And it's got like a little ladybug on it too, which is super cute. And I think I'm going to use that over on the right fairy garden. Kind of more for like the house. Um, so I've got like the meadow and then we've got like the little fairy home and we're going to kind of make it all work together. Now this piece, I could not find the bridge. I thought that fairy garden had a bridge, but I couldn't find it. All I could find was this pathway, but I thought I could make that work as a bridge to connect the two fairy gardens together. And it actually worked out pretty well. So I think there is a bridge. I've looked, I looked at like maybe three different Dollar Trees and I couldn't find it, so I went with the path. There's also a little welcome sign that came with that. That looks really cute. It looks like a um, little like tree wood with like a little welcome sign in there. So I thought that'd be cute here at the front of the house. And it's just kind of seeing what you can find and how you can make it kind of all work together. These pieces were like a little bit larger. They're super cute. Um, there's like this like little live, laugh, love made out of leaves, which is cute. Um, that package also has like a welcome sign in it and like a little lamp post. So it's kind of like playing around with it, kind of like a tear tray, kind of seeing what looks cute to make a scene. There's like a little welcome arrow sign, which is super cute. And again, it's just a matter of kind of playing with it, putting it there, seeing how you like it. Once I get everything um, laid out exactly the way I want it, we'll glue everything down and then we'll decorate this some more. I wasn't too sure about the lamp post just because it's not painted super well, but I think we can probably use it somewhere. Like maybe over here in the home scene, it's just kind of trying to lay it out in a way that makes sense. I want to have pathways and different stuff like that through there too. Now, I thought these were cute, too. They're a little on the smaller size, but they're like little birds on posts. There's a really cute little wood welcome sign. And I wanted to use a lot of pieces to kind of make it look nice and full. So I thought maybe we could do like the little bird on the post over here, like in the meadow. This cute little welcome sign would look cute next to that little tree um, house over here. So it's again, just a matter of kind of arranging them. And I love how this turned out. It is so fun to DIY. And this would be a great project if you have little ones around that want to get involved. Um, so much creativity. And then finally for the fairies. Now be careful when you buy these because I went through a couple packages. This package just looked less destroyed. But one of my fairies did still have a broken wing. That one there on the left. I'm going to choose this fairy because she has like a pink dress on. I'll kind of go with the decor. And she's reading a book. And I thought, 
I will have her hang out over here on this fairy garden because I already have a fairy on the other one, like swinging in the swing. So again, I have them all kind of set. It's just kind of figuring out what's going to make sense. I want a path to come from the front to kind of go to the house. And I want a path to go over to the meadow, to the bench and stuff like that to look at the pond. And I think that looks pretty good. That kind of makes sense. For the grass, I'm going to be using reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree. And when you buy this, I do recommend trying to make sure you find one that's kind of wet. It works a lot better today. I used some that wasn't like kind of dried out and I had to wet it a lot. And it was kind of not very, um, it didn't look great. I thought you could kind of re-wet them a little bit better than, I don't know, I soaked it and it was really, it was really dried out. So I put a little reindeer moss over here in the corner and then I just hot glue down my cute little swing and I'm just going to sit the moss in there since I have the frame. It all sits in there rather nicely. You can kind of push it down to kind of make it look like a grassy meadow. And there's also, you know, kind of different colors of green. I kind of like this is one of my favorite colors of the reindeer moss, but sometimes at Dollar Tree, it's kind of whatever you can find. I glued that little live, laugh, love leaf sign down there and then kind of finished out this part of the meadow. And we are going to decorate it more with all kinds of like little spring things that's going to make it look like a spring meadow. I'm also going to glue down my little bird on my post and my bench. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and do the pond and the other little bird here in the front. And then I'm going to continue um, putting moss everywhere, even like under the bench and stuff like that. Anywhere where you can kind of see the wood come through, I'm going to try to fill that in with moss. Now for the path, I thought I would use a different color of moss. I was able to find this floral moss at the Dollar Tree, and it's a little bit more of a brown color. So I thought that would make a really good meadow path. You can also use potting soil for this, and we will be using potting soil for the other um, side the other fairy garden right there and as you can see I kind of went from the bridge all the way to the bench with that floral moss and using more than one color like that can really add a little bit of variety and then I'm going to finish off the rest of it with some more reindeer moss again trying to make sure it's as full as it can be I want my path to go all the way to the bench all the way in, in front of it and then we can start filling in the other fairy garden over here with a moss as well. Um, I just kind of finishing off my layout. I had trouble figuring out where I was going to put the little light post, but I decided to put it back here in the back. And our little fairy reading a book can be right about here. Her little flower house with her welcome sign. And again, I'm only hot gluing my stuff down because I want to be able to move it around without everything tipping over or falling over. This is going to be an indoor one, but you could also do this one as an outdoor one too, depending on what you put it in. Now here is some more reindeer moss. I'm going to start spreading that around. On this one, I'm going to do like a mossy meadow everywhere, but I am also going to have a path to go over to the pond and stuff like that. And I'm also going to have a path that goes to the house. So I'm not going to need as much reindeer moss on this side, but I do want like the backyard um, and the front yard mostly to be covered in it. I like to kind of break it apart in those smaller pieces and kind of push it down to kind of make it look like a grassy field. I don't want it to be super tall, um, just about the same as like the border of the uh, um, frame of the picture frame. So again, I'm going to use some of that brown floral moss for this path that's going to go over to like the little meadow there, make a little scene. And I left a path uh, with no moss so that I could fill it up with soil. So I was also able to find potting soil at the Dollar Tree, which is a great find. And I'm going to go ahead and just start um, spooning or cupping some of this in here. I don't want to make too big of a mess with the potting soil. But I just want enough that I can create a little path. Now for the bridge, I'm also going to glue it down, but I'm only going to glue it to one side 
That way I can move the two different fairy gardens independently, but I don't really want it to be falling off. So I just glued it to the frame itself. And then for the path going up to the house, I'm gonna use some of the little wood slices from the Dollar Tree. They're just little cut pieces of wood and they work great for little tiny stepping stones. And so I'm gonna kind of push those down into the potting soil over here to provide a perfect little fairy garden path. That is a great use for those. And then check out the mushrooms they have in the Easter section this year. I believe these are new this year, I've never seen them. They come in pastel colors and they're so cute. They're little, past, they're little foam mushrooms. They come in two different sizes. These are the mini, mini ones. So at first I'm gonna start with the pink with the white spots. I'm cutting the wire but leaving it on about an inch or so so I can kind of hook it and push it down into the moss. And that's gonna help it stand up. You can see it through um, the moss and everything like that. It makes it tall enough. Um, and the hook kind of keeps it in place. So I'm just gonna scatter little pink mushrooms around. I wanted to use the pink ones because of course I'm going with the pink theme for this section of my kitchen with my spring. And then finding small flowers at the Dollar Tree. Um, sometimes it can be a little difficult. These are called spike, and they have these little tiny white flowers that are pretty small. I always wish that Dollar Tree had a smaller flower variety because I do struggle finding flowers small enough there to use on little miniature projects like this. But I scattered around some white, and then for soft pink, this is called baby's breath. Um, and they're pretty small too. So I'm gonna just kind of um, scatter those around too. These are, like they don't really have a flower center. They have little, like, little tabs on there to keep everything together. And some of mine were not doubled up. Um, so make sure they're doubled up. They look a lot better when there's like two flowers, one on top of each other. So I scattered some soft pink around. And then I also found like a brighter pink of the baby's breath at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just cutting off like um, like a half inch to an inch of the stem and just pushing that down into the moss. And it'll help it stand up. I also found the little mushrooms from the Easter Isle in lavender. And so I thought that would go nicely with the pink. So I'm going to use some of the, the smaller ones on those as well. And I'm just cutting the wire. The wire is pretty easy to cut, um, about an inch, hooking it. I'm going to scatter those around kind of next to my pink ones to provide a little bit of variety and um, color and just a little bit more decor. And this is how it turned out. My two indoor spring fairy gardens. This is the meadow over there with the little fairy in the swing the little path to the bench overlooking like a little pond with a frog in it. It's super cute. And then you can take the little bridge over to the little fairy garden house. We have the little pink flower house with the little fairy reading a book over in the corner. Little bird bath in front, cute little path. And you can just get really creative with your fairy gardens. I love how these turn together and it was a great way to bring of spring fairy garden indoor for indoor decor and I love decorating for spring it's so fun if you're enjoying today's video so far be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe we're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers okay for the next indoor fairy garden I'm going to show you how to make a fairy garden on a much smaller scale I picked up this Dollar Tree picture frame it's got butterflies in it. it's really cute check out this frame the, it's nice and high and the wood is really nice looking and so it doesn't need much. Perfect little base for an indoor fairy garden. I thought I would use another one of these little swings. This one's got a gnome in it. So this one's going to be a little bit more whimsical with a gnome instead of a fairy. But the same little pink tree and the little swing, so cute. You don't have to do anything to it. Um, I'm just going to kind of put mine over to the side like that. And then this is one of the little flower bird baths from the fairy garden section and with like a lavender flower on top. This is not gonna be a very big one, so it's not gonna need a lot of pieces. Um, this is another little fairy garden package that I found. It's got like the spigot 
um, a welcome sign, and like a little frog like on a leaf. Super cute. So I'm trying to figure out what would look nice. I'm thinking like the welcome sign and then the little gnome in the swing. And I think that's going to be enough. We can fill the rest of it out with um, grass and flowers and stuff like that to do a smaller little fairy garden that you could put really anywhere. And again, if you wanted to modify any of these ideas for outdoor ones, you totally could. But we're starting with indoor ones. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue all of mine down just because I don't want them falling around. This is kind of the setup so far. The gnome swinging in the tree, the bird bath, and a little welcome sign in the front. So again, we're gonna be using reindeer moss. This one's kind of like a more green. I always try to save this um, if I have any extra. So I have lots of different colors and stuff, trying to make it all kind of work together. I'm gonna have a path in this one as well, so I'm kind of leaving an area there without any of the reindeer moss, but again, I want it to look like a spring meadow and super cute. For the path, I'm gonna be using a potting soil again, so I'm gonna kind of just scoop some in there in the path, very easy to do. With the sides, you don't really have to worry about um, making a mess or anything um, when you go to display it. I could kind of still see a little bit of the butterfly print underneath of it. So I did have to make sure that, you know, my moss was pretty thick and kind of covered everything up. Now for the path, I love the look of the little stepping stones made out of the wood slices. So I'm going to use a couple of the little wood slices from the Dollar Tree. And I just kind of push them down until I kind of hit the frame like that, having like the soil go around them. And we can have like a little path going through this fairy garden. Can't do too much with it because it's, a, it's such a smaller scale. And then I love the look of <clears throat> the little mushrooms. Now these are the larger ones that came in the package, the little pink and white spotted ones. So again, I'm just going to cut the wire and kind of hook it, standing those up in the moss. They also come in the lavender, of course, and I'm going to use the larger ones for this one, too. I used the smaller ones on the earlier fairy gardens, and I'm going to kind of scatter those around. Those work great for fairy gardens, and I'm so glad I found those. For flowers, again, I'm going to be using the little spike white flowers. Those work great because you just kind of have to pull them off. The baby spreads you kind of have to cut off because um, they are just attached to the stem itself. So again, I'm going to do like the whites and the pinks. I think that looks so cute for spring. I do like a couple different colors of pink kind of together, but I don't want to overload this fairy garden because it's a little bit smaller. And I think that is just about the right amount of decor. This is how it turned out. Our little spring fairy garden with a little gnome in the swing. I think it turned out really sweet and it was so easy to put together. And a little bit different vibe than the fairies with the little gnome, very whimsical. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked below. You can find out what everybody else has been DIYing. I'm also really active on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I would love to see you over there. Okay, back to the DIYs. I decided to get really creative, and I thought, why can't I do like a vertical fairy garden that you can hang on the wall? So I'm going to use one of the little wood slice signs from the Dollar Tree for that. I thought that looked fairy garden-esque because it looks like a slice of wood. The hanger is kind of long on mine, but I'm going to kind of go with it. I just kind of trimmed off some of the fraying. For the sky, I'm going to use this cloudless acrylic. I get this on Amazon, and I do have it linked in my shop below. It's only like 50 or 60 cents, and you can get it shipped free with Prime. So love that color. And I just used a sponge, and I just did a very light stain for the sky. Now for the items, I was trying to think of things that were kind of flat that I could use on it since we're doing a vertical fairy garden. And I thought this welcome sign that comes with the bridge would be perfect for it because it's kind of flat. It's kind of got a back to the sign like that where I can glue it to it. 
And then I'm going to use one of the fairies that came in the fairy pack. She's super cute. We can stand her over here. She's kind of doing the home alone face thing. <laughs> the little spigot that came in the garden pack. Um, we can put that on there. That's kind of flat. I'm definitely looking for things that are not too bulky. And then the little bush with the flowers that we had left over from earlier from one of the fairy garden packages. And it's just a matter of kind of lining them up. I think four items is going to be plenty. And I just kind of have to decide exactly how I want them on there. Since I am definitely hanging it on the wall, I definitely have to glue these guys down. So I just do a bead of hot glue along the back. So I'm going to glue like the spigot here. And then we're going to be doing like the moss and the flowers and stuff along the bottom. So I thought this was a really creative way to uh, bring a fairy garden to the wall. So I'm going to glue my fairy down next. I don't want it to be like too evenly spaced, spaced out. I want it to be kind of random. So I'm going to do my welcome sign next. That was probably the heaviest piece. So I'm going to make sure to glue that down well. But definitely you're going to have to be careful what kind of pieces you're going to use if you're going to do a vertical fairy garden like this. Now for the grass, we're going to be using the reindeer moss again. I'm going to kind of leave it more clumped this time. That's going to kind of work well for this. And I'm going to glue it down to provide the grass for the bottom of the fairy garden. And since I'm leaving it in a big clump like that, like one um, piece can kind of cover like a whole lot. I do make sure to glue it all securely down though so that it doesn't fall off. Another clump right here. And I'm going to kind of continue that across until it's full. I'm trying to make sure you can't see any of the wood through it. That it's going to look like a solid surface for the bottom. And I'm so glad I had this idea because I think this turned out so cute. And a very creative way to do a fairy garden for indoors. But you know what? You could hang this outdoors as well too if you had like a porch or something like that. And a perfect place to hang it. I'm going to go ahead and glue a little bit more. I had a few areas that looked a little bit thinner and I want it to be thick enough to go under like the base of the signs and stuff like that. So they're like not like completely suspended out there over nothing. That looks pretty good. And now we can decorate our little meadow with flowers. I'm going to be using the white flowers here from the spike. And since I am, it's a wall decor, I am going to glue them in instead of just sitting them in there to make sure that they stay nicely. I'm going to do like one of the pink baby's breath. We'll glue that into the moss right over here. And again, I don't want to overwhelm it too much with decorations. I want it to look like a simple little fairy garden. And then I thought a few mushrooms would be cute. I was also able to find the little mushrooms in this blue color. So I'm kind of going a little bit more colorful with this one. These are the very tiny ones and um, I'm going to cut the wire and attach that as well to provide another little decor piece. It's looking really cute. I thought the sky looked a little bit plain just being a solid blue. And so I am going to decorate that a little bit with just a white paint pen. Doing clouds is super easy. I'm just using my Posca paint pen and I'm just basically like painting circles, kind of putting them all together, kind of like more of like oval shapes. And we're just going to scatter a few clouds here across the top of the sky just to provide a little bit more fun. Nothing crazy, just like three clouds across the sky. And this is how it turned out, our little hanging fairy garden. I think it's so cute. I thought the hanger looked a little plain, so I decided to add a little color to that with some of this spring ribbon from the Dollar Tree. This is like the pink with the white flowers on it. And I'm just going to tie that to the very top of my hanger. And I'm going to tie a very simple little bow here on the top just to provide like a little pop of color up there and give it a little spring fun as well. So it's just a matter of trying to tie this evenly, get a few tails that aren't too long, and kind of trim those up. Just a little pop of color up there. And I'm glad I added that because I think it really made it look cute here in the end.
So there is the final result of our hanging fairy garden. And this is how it looks hanging in my home. I love it. I think it's very whimsical and I've never seen anybody do one like this. So hopefully a creative idea for you guys with your spring fairy gardens. Very cute. You could also use like the oval wood slices and stuff like that they have from the Dollar Tree. Now for the next fairy garden, we're gonna be making it in one of these little terrarium planters from the Dollar Tree. So you could make this a hanging one if you wanted. You could hang it from the top. I'm gonna have mine be standing, but I thought it'd be a perfect home for one of these larger fairies from the fairy garden. She is like sitting like on a log and I thought she'd be the perfect piece to add to that little terrarium. Not so sure about the other little flower um, on the log. I don't think that's really going to work. I think one major piece will work good in here and then we can decorate the rest of it to look like a little fairy garden. And now she kind of sat a little low. I didn't know if you'd be able to see her too well. So I decided to boost her up with one of those little wood stems from the Dollar Tree. But it would probably work without, but I have these handy. So I'm going to go ahead and glue one of the wood um, stems down, wood slices down, and then I'm going to attach her like right on top. I thought that looked good. You could see her really well like that. So I'm going to then hot glue the fairy to the base. And you can see her really nicely through the opening in the front of the terrarium. This one was such an easy little terrarium to put together and it turned out so cute. Now I decided I didn't really have room for any of the larger pieces, so we're gonna go ahead and straight into the moss for the meadow. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in the area around her. You know, it's a spherical surface, but just kind of anywhere where I think that there would be grass, I'm gonna put some of that reindeer moss. And just kind of fill it in. And then we can decorate the meadow for the fairy garden and give it that fairy garden look. This is a great way to add a little spring fairy garden vibe if you only have a small amount of space to decorate. And you could sit this anywhere, like kitchens, bathrooms, wherever. It's kind of all self-enclosed. Now to decorate it, I'm going to use some of the lavender foam mushrooms from the Easter Isle. And we're going to use the tiny ones because this is kind of a small scale one. And again, I'm just cutting like about an inch of wire, kind of hooking it and putting that down into the moss to make it stand up. For pink flowers, I'm going to use like the hot pink baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. Cut one of those. We'll do like the soft pink baby's breath as well. Just cutting that stem off and putting one of those here in the front. Now to display it, I'm going to use one of these glass candle holders from the Dollar Tree. I thought this would look nice. It's going to boost it up, kind of make it look like it's on a pedestal. Again, you could hang it if you had a place to hang that. It'd be look cute hanging on a porch as well. And I'm going to use a combination of the E6000 and a little bit of hot glue, um, just because glass is a little bit harder to hot glue um, for a permanent bond. And I'm going to just go ahead and sit that right on top trying to let my glue set up a little bit. Now to add a little color to the top, I'm gonna to use some of that spring ribbon from the Dollar Tree, the pink with the white flowers, and I just thread that through the top, and just a simple knot, I'm gonna let like the ribbon kinda of hang down, kinda of cascade down the sides of the terrarium. And I just want like the white flower to be up, I just trim the sides, no crazy bow or anything like that, I just wanted a little pop of color, and texture on the top of this little fairy garden. And this is how she turned out. I think she's so cute. And how easy was that to put together? Very simple. You could definitely make this in under five minutes. And I really love those glass candle holders like that from the Dollar Tree. They work great for kind of boosting projects up like this and making them look a little bit more substantial. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube, so be sure to find that join button under today's video. 
Okay, for the next fairy garden, we're doing an outdoor fairy garden. So I picked up one of these planter trolleys from Dollar Tree. They have these in several different colors, tan, green, and like terracotta, I believe. Since this is going to be an outdoor fairy garden, it does need to have drainage. And there's no holes in this. So um, in these little inset areas, I'm just using my drill to um, pop some holes in here so that it will drain and this fairy garden won't be holding any water, anything like that. I wanted to do like a whimsical fairy garden that I could put out in my landscaping. And the really fun thing about doing an outdoor fairy garden, I know in my garden is that I find things living in it like frogs, um, sometimes nasty things like slugs, but I, I even had a snail living in one of mine. One time I thought that was really cute. And so I am going to start it off with potting soil. And look at my potting soil from the Dollar Tree. It had a plastic bottle cap in it. Kind of weird. But I'm going to kind of just break it up, scatter that around. This is going to provide a base for my fairy garden. And um, I'm going to use some of that in the decor as well. I don't fill it in too much. Just about um, maybe about halfway. But I love the flat saucer like look at this. It makes a perfect fairy garden. For the house, I found this great mushroom house. It's so cute. Kind of reminds me of like a Smurf mushroom house with the orange mushroom with the white spots on it. Super cute. And then I was able to find some other like mushroom items that were like on the larger scale. So this one's like got purple, green, and orange like toadstools. Aren't these so cute? And I thought we could kind of line the path to the little mushroom house with like some giant mushrooms. I did pick this package up in um, two different colors for a little variety. These are more like orange and yellow, a little bit different shape mushrooms, but again, on the larger size. And I'm gonna put a couple of these over here I noticed that most of them were like orange or red. The green and the <clears throat> purple kind of stood out a little bit. So I think I'll save those for another project and just kind of go with like the orange and red colors for this fairy garden. Just kind of arranging them randomly like that, the different kinds of toadstools. And then I even found like a mushroom welcome sign. This one's got like two mushrooms and a little wood welcome sign. I thought that would be really cute. We could put that here like leading to the little mushroom house and kind of pointing that direction to go down the path. Now for the path, you could just use stepping stones like we've been using, but I decided to use one of the little garden paths from the fairy garden for this one. This one's a little different than the one I used as the bridge earlier. It is like more red than wood, but I think either one would look cute. Since I'm doing an orange and red theme, I thought the red path would look cute. So we're going to have that lead up directly to the house. It's not quite long enough, but we can always use stepping stones in addition to that. Now for the grass part, we're going to use reindeer moss again. And I'm just kind of breaking that up, spreading that around the very back of the house. Um, kind of like a little backyard. And then we'll use a little wood slices here to kind of finish off our path right here in the front. And again, the great thing about fairy gardens is that you can get so creative. It's just kind of finding things that are miniature enough to be used for a fairy garden. And I like the idea of doing an outdoor fairy garden in a pot like this because um, it's easier to kind of clean up and to move around if you're doing landscaping and stuff like that. So I just, again, this was the moss that was dry that I had to wet. As you can see, it's just not quite as great, but I kind of scattered that around. Hopefully being outside with this Florida humidity will kind of make that look a little bit better. Here is another one of the little bird baths. This one has the yellow flower. I thought that color would go nice with like the red and the oranges we've been using. And a little bit more reindeer moss to kind of fill things in. And then for flowers, I thought it would be fun to bring in a little yellow. Um, I found these flowers at Dollar Tree. They're kind of like a star-shaped flower, but again, on the smaller size or smaller scale. 
And these are great, like the white spike ones. You can just kind of like pop these off. And I'm going to kind of scatter those about for a little flowers. And then since I'm doing like a red, orange, yellow kind of theme, um, I don't really want to do any pink. So I thought I'd bring in some whites. If you leave the spikes together, um, it's kind of cool. So I thought that looked good all together. I didn't really like the uh, white like berry stuff at the top though. I thought that was a little too much. So I just trimmed that off and kind of put that one right over here. And I'm just kind of pushing everything down in there. Again, this is going to be an outdoor one. And so um, things are kind of kind of move around, but you can kind of rearrange it as needed. I did another one of the white spike flowers trimmed down over here on the other side. And I liked those all together because it provided a little bit of height. Making sure my mushrooms are standing up nicely, kind of buried down into the soil and the moss a little bit, but um, also so you can still kind of see it. And this is how it turned out. My little fairy garden, my outdoor fairy garden um, that I can put out in my landscaping. And I think it turned out really cute. I really like that tan color of the planter. It's not too overbearing like the other colors might be. But I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this? Using the little wheeled one like this um, gives you that flat saucer-like appearance, which works great. Now, you can use just about anything for a fairy garden. I'm going to show you how I use this little seagrass mini tear tray from the Target dollar spot for a fairy garden. I'm going to make the bottom of mine look like a fairy garden. I thought that'd be fun for a cute little spring tear tray. So I'm going to take some reindeer moss and just scatter that around the bottom tier. I love this tear tray. I picked this up at Target Dollar Spot last year for $5. I think they bring these back from time to time. Keep your eye open for these. These are so cute. And just the right size for a small tear tray. And again, I'm going to use some of the spring items from the Dollar Tree. This is the like large mushroom. I kind of like the green color. I think that's really cute. I kind of want to make, make it look like a little fairy house though. So I'm just going to paint like a little door on it. <clears throat> Nothing crazy. Just like a little rounded top door and I'm going to do pink to make it look nice and springy. So I just used a pink paint pen and just drew a little door on to the front. <laughs> I thought that the green color on the top of the um, mushroom was really nice. So I'm going to leave that that color. And then I'm going to kind of outline it here with just a white paint pen. Kind of clean it up a little bit. Give a little border around my door. And then I can also use that to do like a little fairy doorknob on the front. I'm not going to do any windows or anything like that. I just wanted something simple, kind of like a little door. And this is the perfect size little fairy garden house. You could also use one of the little mushroom houses that are already kind of a fairy garden decor. But I kind of wanted to use this one. I thought it was cute. So I'm going to kind of nestle that in the moss here at the bottom of my um, tear tray and if you had like a flat basket basket tray or anything like that you could also do a fairy garden in it it'd be really cute I love this little bench so I bought another one of these this is the little wood bench with the pink flower on it we're gonna sit that over here in our little fairy garden there at the bottom and then I found these I thought these were so cute little stepping stones with words on them aren't these so cute they say different things like love garden, sweet home, enjoy time. I'm going to do the love garden and kind of like lay one here towards the front of my little fairy garden. I'm going to decorate the top of it with um, some really cute items I found at the Target Dollar Spot this year and their spring stuff. But the bottom is definitely a little fairy garden. For the path, I used the floral moss from the Dollar Tree just because it's a little bit more brown. I don't really want to be doing any soil or anything like that in my nice little tear tray. I don't want it to stain it. For flowers, I'm going to use some of the pink baby's breath. Just cutting those down and kind of nestling those into the reindeer moss. I know it's a little hard to see here at this angle, but I will show you how everything kind of came together. I'm also going to scatter um, some of the lighter pink baby's breath around like that and there is our little fairy garden scene down there really easy to put together I thought a few mushrooms would be cute too so I have some of the larger pink and white mushrooms 
And since I'm doing a lot of pink on this one, I thought I would scatter a few of those as well. Hooking the wire and putting those down into the reindeer moss. I think that's plenty. Now check out these great items I found at the Target dollar spot this year. They're only a dollar. They have these little like mint green garden boots, which are so cute and just the right size for a small tear tray like this. I'm going to put that on the very top. And they have these little watering cans. So cute. Dollar Tree has something similar on a stake that you can take off. But these are kind of ready to go. This one's a little bit smaller too. And again, only a dollar. So cheaper than the Dollar Tree. I didn't really care for the green and white gingham bow on there. So I just pulled mine off. And I'm going to sit that next to my little garden boots over here. And then for the final item, they have these little flower pots for a dollar at the spring section at Dollar Tree. And um, so cute. Some little white and yellow flowers to finish off the top of the tear tray. I thought about putting a little moss on the top too, but I decided I didn't really need it. <clears throat> and so this is how it turned out. My little spring tear tray. That's also a little bit of a fairy garden. I don't know why my camera didn't want to focus too well on these kind of like multi-layered projects, but this is the top of it. And then if you move down, this is the bottom of the fairy garden with our little mushroom house, little bench, little love garden rock, super easy to do and very whimsical for spring. And let me kind of show you how it all looks together. My little spring tear tray. I thought that was a fun idea for a fairy garden. Now for the next one, I'm going to be using one of these plastic garden dishes from Dollar Tree to be doing an outdoor beach themed fairy garden. I actually did this one last spring, but I loved it so much and I'm still using it that I thought I would show you this one as well. If you want to do a beach version of a fairy garden. You could do this for indoor or outdoor. Um, this one actually started out indoor and then moved outdoor. I love it. Since this plastic is so lightweight, I needed to weigh it down. So I'm using some Dollar Tree rocks. If you're using a more substantial like tray, you probably wouldn't need to do this. But I just glued mine down over here <clears throat> to kind of do like the land part of our beach scene. Just to kind of build up some land. I guess you could also do that with potting soil if you wanted to. And then we're going to need a beach for our beach scene, right? So we're going to use some of the tan sand from Dollar Tree and just spread that in this area right here. We're also going to have kind of a water zone. I found this great um, at Fairy Garden Tiki Bar at the Dollar Tree. So cute and a really nice size piece, especially if you're making a larger fairy garden like this. I'm going to have this be on the beach, but have it be up against like the dune, the, the dune that we're going to be creating there to do like a beach scene. So da lots of different layers for this one. I do want it to look um, grassy, less rocky. We don't have rocky beaches like this in Florida. So I'm actually going to use some reindeer moss and I kind of want it to look tropical. So I want it to look grassy. So we're going to kind of get that look with the reindeer moss, but we're also going to be bringing in like some tropical plants and stuff as well to make that look a little bit more coastal. And we're going to be decorating the beach and stuff like that with some of the fairy garden beach items and also some fairy garden stuff that I found at Target Dollar Spot last year. So to make it tropical, I'm using some of like the Dollar Tree fern greenery. This stuff is really great. I have a hard time kind of finding this at Dollar Tree lately, but you could also use like the little fern plants, but these are great because I can just pull off the individual like little fern pieces and kind of put it down. And I want it to kind of look like a tropical wild Florida up here. So I'm just going to have kind of palm fronds kind of going every which direction. Um, I'm also going to use some of these just for a little bit of color, some of the greenery from the Dollar Tree, um, but not something that's like super flowery, something that you would see more kind of growing in the wild in Florida. And um, I'm going to have to use a little bit of hot glue to kind of get this to kind of stand up more. 
And again, kind of just make it look super wild and tropical here in the very back of our fairy garden. But it does provide a little pop of color with that lavender. I think those are really kind of pretty. Now for the water, um, I started with some of the blue sand from the Dollar Tree. This is like a blue, two different colors of blue and a white mixed together. I thought that would make a good water. But then I kind of poured it in there. I wasn't really digging it. I thought I needed a, something a little bit more blue. So I do kind of switch that up and you'll see that here in a minute. Now I found these last year at Dollar Tree, Fairy Garden items. I hope they bring these back again this year. They're so cute. There's like a little beach chair, a little beach umbrella, um, kind of a little bit larger scale than some of the items that I found at Dollar Tree. Um, and so I'm gonna do like a little beach chair right here in front of our tiki bar, but they do have these in the smaller scale, the Fairy Garden section at the Dollar Tree. This was a little beach umbrella to go with our little beach chair. I'm just gonna be using those two pieces in this one. I guess you could always use like, if you weren't gonna put it outside, you could use like the paper drink umbrellas from Dollar Tree, that would work well too. Now for the little tiki bar, I love it, but I really wasn't digging the color scheme. I didn't think it looked super tropical. So I'm gonna give mine a quick little makeover with some turquoise um, acrylic paint instead of the green to make it look a little beachier. And that's gonna kind of make it go with that little beach umbrella color scheme a little bit more, a little bit of blue. I liked how it was painted and stuff like that. So just kind of updating the green to blue um, kind of gave it a different vibe. I do like the red on it. That goes with like my beach chair. And I'm gonna use a little hot glue to make sure this kind of try to stays in place a little bit. And it's actually held up really well for a year, even being outside. Now to decorate the beach, we're gonna use some Dollar Tree Fairy Garden sand castles. So cute. So I'm gonna put that in the sand right there. They, they have lots of great little beach items at the Fairy Garden section. I love creating stuff with. And this is like a little beach sign. I'm gonna put that right over here, nestle that down into the sand. And it's kind of the same thing you're doing with a regular fairy garden, but you're just kind of making it look like a beach scene instead. This is like a little shell with like a little hermit crab. They have like little pelicans, crabs, different things that you can use to decorate. I thought we would have our little hermit crab right over here, kind of sneaking up behind the sand castle. And they also have like buckets, sand buckets, coral, different items like that. I was trying to decide if I wanted one or two of the sand castles. This is the one that has like the little sand bucket. I thought that would be cute for the beach. There's also coral and stuff like that if you wanted to, um, decorate the water a little bit. I don't have very much water in my beach scene. So I replaced one of my sand castles with a little sand bucket with a little shovel sticking out, which is super cute. And then I was like, oh, maybe I can put like a pelican like over here <laughs> um, in the dune, just for fun. Now I told you I didn't really like the blue sand for the water. So I decided to um, cover that up with some of the light blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree. I thought that would be cute and make it better water, especially for outdoors. I'm just using, I tried to use a like funnel <laughs> to try to kind of keep it in one area. It wasn't quite large enough though. So I'm just gonna kind of scatter the blue stones. And I do like that better. It's a brighter blue for the water and it's gonna look great for a fairy garden and hold up well outside kind of keeping everything weighed down. I was kind of impressed with this fairy garden that the sand and stuff really kind of stayed in place and um, it lasted really well. The only problem I had is where I put mine, I did have ants underneath of it, so I did have to be careful where I located my little Tiki Bar Beach Scene fairy garden, but this is how it turned out. I think it's so sweet. The little sign says, beach um happy place and that is definitely my happy place 
we've been having some beach weather and I haven't been to the beach lately and <clears throat> I need to make that a priority today. Maybe after I get this video uploaded. And now you've made it all the way to the final reveal. I hope you enjoyed all eight of these Fairy Garden Spring DIYs. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps. Comment your favorite Fairy Garden in the comments below or just come say hello. And don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy. Just close your eyes and let them rest. I know it's hard fall asleep but do your best cause there's a place that I go to when I want to hide from all the shades of blue cause at times I think of leaving my mind takes me back to fall when the snow begins to sing I'm counting years as they go by Now all the lilies gone and aces brought to life Cause at times I think of leaving My mind takes me back to fall When the snow begins to sink Thank you so much for joining me today. I'd also like to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting me here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C, and Iris Cornelius. Thank you so much for joining my Crafty Beach Bum membership. It means a lot. And if you'd like to watch more Dollar Tree DIYs, be sure to check out this video right here. Until then, happy crafting.